me go to Jeff. Jeff Coyne is from Ohio. Hey, Jeff. Hi, hi, Dan. Thanks for your show. Sure thing. Uh, um, the prior call was kind of a lead-in into mine, which is given the you know the state of the United States and where the Fed can you know prop up the stock market or take it down. You have a government that can decide to put regulations that will run a company out of business. But with that being the background, there's a there's an annuity that you talk about that benefits the AFR and uh, and and guarantees yeah. a certain payout. Correct. And my my question is, how can anybody guarantee a payout in this world that we're in now? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, and and by the way, I um, I make the case for charitable gift annuity or charitable trust in general. I've been doing that for 25 years as a, as a piece of one's portfolio to create some permanent income. Um, and that's why I've said, to bring go to your point, well, I've said that it's in, in, incredibly important that when we look at doing this, and, and listen, I believe we ought to be about the work of God. And, and there are some ministries, Samaritan's Purse, uh, Billy Graham, uh, Transworld Radio, Gospel for Asia. There's some great ministries out there that we can do this with. All I all I have said is that we need to be very cautious on how we do that. So here's here's what those legitimate organizations have to adhere to. There are regulations that say there must be cash reserves set aside. So these these monies in charitable gift annuities are, are not allowed to be a part of anything else that the ministry is doing. It's audited, by the way, every year. It's not audited every 10 years, five years, every, you know, even three years. It's audited every year. That has to be certified. These monies are not commingled with any monies of the ministry. They're set apart. There also has to be a reserve, according to the government, a reserve so that if that particular ministry were to go bankrupt, cease to exist, um, that there would be reserves that would pay all the annuitants, enough reserves to pay all the annuitants. So that, that law is in place. And also, when you look at certain ministries, and I can't, I can speak for a lot of ministries, but I won't because I've consulted with so many of the major uh, ministries on their pools, <clears throat> annuity pools. But I will say this, American Family Association has about 45 to 55% more in their pool, their annuity pool money, than, does, than is required by the government. And there's a lot of reasons for that that I won't talk about, but most of it is just basically good stewardship on their part. Now, if there is a collapse in the economic system, so let's say uh, everything collapses. Well, let's just say we go into a depression. We go into a deep depression. There will be on, on every, every single investment in the world, bar none, there will be a collapse of value of those investments. There is no doubt about it. The question is, will there be cash value in your investments? So this would go the same for your personal portfolio outside of an annuity. Would you have, if there is a collapse tomorrow, do you have 50% in cash or some percentage in cash that is going to carry you through for an extended period of time so that you don't have to sell all those investments that have collapsed. That's what I mean when I say hedging on the downside. So when we see high reserves in a particular pool that are hedged for that downside, I don't think that anybody can say that, you know, it's not going to run out if we have a depression that's going to last three, four years uh, or a, uh, or any any other catastrophic event, um, then that is not going to be the case. So it is no different than any other investment. The difference is, though, 
if you are an investor, and these are not investments, uh, I mean, the investments inside their annuity pool is, but you putting money in this is not an investment, and I don't want to leave that impression. But if you are an investor and you are investing in other things, you are doing the exact, you're, you're in a same exact position where you understand as sound as your investments might be, and probably one of the most sound investments that I can think of that I use as an example is probably agricultural land. If you have an investment in that, um, that too is going to come down and there will not be buyers for it. So you stand the same, the same risk. So if you are of the mind that you need to be well diversified and you need to be thinking about permanent income, then, and you want to do it strictly through an investment portfolio, I would suggest that you wouldn't do that. I would suggest that if you want to develop a responsible plan, that you have diversification in all classes of assets, including some that are going to produce permanent income. But if we have a crisis, forget your Social Security, forget all those other permanent incomes, they're going to dramatically change one way or another. But we don't do those things based on the fear. We would do those things based on the hope, I guess, now that we're going to continue being strong. We'll be right back. 